What's up world? This is Brad from Project Build Stuff and today we're building this awesome rolling storage cart using only four tools and one sheet of plywood. If you're anything like me, your garage is probably always a mess. Every time I go to do a project, there's tons of things in my way, from tools to paint cans to sporting equipment. If it can get in my way, it does. So today we're gonna to be building an awesome DIY storage solution that'll help organize your shop and mine and keep it looking great. And even better, it only takes four tools to build so anyone can do it. Enough of me talking, let's get to work. Whenever I'm gonna be breaking down large sheets of plywood, I always pull out my folding work table and throw a sheet of rigid foam insulation on top. This is a great solution because you can cut into it all you want and you don't have to worry about messing up your workbench. Breaking down large sheets of plywood like this can be really overwhelming at first, but I wanna tell you it's not that hard. All you need is a couple of tools, namely a trusty circular saw, a couple of squeeze clamps, and a nice straight board. We're gonna be using this board as the guide for our saw to cut on all of our cut lines. To get those cut lines, be sure to check down in the description where I have full plans for this project that have all the cut lists and diagrams you need to cut your plywood down to the perfect size. Before we start doing any cutting, we need to make sure we check one thing on our saw, and that's the distance between our blade and the edge of our base plate. In my case, that's about an inch and three quarters, but on every saw, it's gonna be slightly different, so make sure you measure it on yours. And remember that number, so I need to remember an inch and three quarters, because we're gonna need that when we're setting up our cuts. So for this first cut, I wanna cut at 60, so I'm gonna mark at 61 and three quarters. Then just place your guide board on your mark and clamp it down. As you're cutting, make sure you're keeping that base plate tight against the board to get a nice straight cut. Just remember the steps, measure, mark, clamp, and cut. With our plywood fully broken down, we're left with five pieces to work with. You have your top and bottom, your center divider, and your two sides. We could move on to the assembly right now if we wanted to, but I think I wanna add a little visual intrigue to this since I'm gonna be seeing it for years to come. So on the base, as well as the two sides, we're gonna add some roundovers, which number one, removes that sharp pointy edge that I just know I'll hit myself on and will make it look a little nicer. The cup I'm using to mark this curve is about four inches, but any round object will do just fine. When it comes to the jigsaw, it can be a little scary, but just try to stick as close to that line as possible, and we'll clean up any imperfections with the sandpaper. Make sure to round over all four corners of the base, as well as the top two corners of the side pieces. It's time to start tackling the assembly. And this can definitely be the most stressful part of any build, but I've found having the right tools makes it go so much smoother. We're gonna be using the M12 Milwaukee pin nailer for a lot of this assembly, which is great because it helps everything go together super quickly. I love this tool. We're also gonna be gluing together all of the joints using a little bit of wood glue. And then to keep everything nice and rigid and strong, we're gonna be driving in a couple of screws. This will make sure it lasts for years to come. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description for all the tools I'm using on this project so you can check it out and see if there's anything you need to add to your arsenal. We're gonna start by joining the top to the two sides. Make sure you put a healthy amount of glue on here because that's what's gonna be doing most of the holding in these joints. We're gonna hold it in place with a couple of pin nails while the glue dries. These 90 degree clamps are great for this type of project because they hold everything in place until you can get some nails in. The center divider is gonna go in just the same, just make sure it's perfectly centered between your two sides. When putting the base on, I found it's easiest to flip the whole project upside down on its head and nail it in from the bottom. Okay. 
The main body here is fully assembled and it's really looking good, but I have to say I'm so happy with this Milwaukee M12 pin nailer. It is working out great for this project. It's nice and light and small so it can fit in all the nooks and crannies of this project and it drives the nails to the perfect depth so I have a nice smooth surface and no cleanup is necessary. Big shout out to Home Depot for sponsoring this video and providing this M12 pin nailer. It has been great. If you are interested in picking up any of the Milwaukee M12 tools, be sure to check the link down in the description for the full Home Depot lineup that they have. They're great tools, go get one for yourself. We're gonna finish off the main assembly by throwing a couple screws into each one of these joints. And that just ensures that everything stays nice and rigid. With everything fully assembled, the next step is to figure out how we're going to hold up our melt crates so we have lots of storage. I ripped down a couple of pieces of plywood on my table saw that work perfect for this. But if you're someone who doesn't have a table saw, don't worry, I have an alternate for you that'll work just fine. You can also pick up one by two pieces of lumber from your local Home Depot that will also work. We're gonna nail these on the inside here to support our milk crates. Before we get those bottom supports in place, we're gonna put a couple of strips of wood down the back edge. This will work as blocking to stop our crates from sliding through when we insert them. To keep our bottom supports level and even, I cut a couple of spacer blocks at 13 and a quarter. This takes all the guesswork and measuring out of it and makes this part of the project go so much quicker. I am so happy with how this rolling storage cart came out. It looks so nice in my shop, rolls away when I don't need it, but most importantly, it's helping me stay organized, which I needed bad. All this junk that would normally be all over my workspace is instead tucked away and easily accessible in all of these milk crates. It is so nice. I hope some of you guys go to tackle this project on your own. It's a great DIY friendly project that only uses a couple tools. If you're gonna tackle it on your own, be sure to check the link out down in the description for full build plans to this project and many more over on my website, projectbuildstuff.com. And if you do make one for yourself, I'd love to see your take on it. Be sure to send me some pictures over on Instagram at Project Build Stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this project as much as I love building it. And until next time, it's your turn. Go build stuff.